Welcome to part three of Polar Equations of Conic Sections. In this video, we'll take a look at graphing a hyperbola when the equation is in polar form. Again, let's start with a quick review. If we have a polar equation in either of these two forms, we will have a conic section with eccentricity E. If our denominator is one plus or minus E cosine theta, we'll have a vertical directrix at x equals plus or minus D. And if our denominator is one plus or minus E sine theta, we'll have a horizontal directrix at Y equals plus or minus D. Let's go and take a look at our example. We want to graph the equation R equals eight divided by the quantity two minus four sine theta. The first thing we should recognize is our denominator needs to be in the form of one plus or minus E sine theta. So that tells us we'll have to divide everything on the right side by positive two. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and simplify this. So we'll have four divided by one minus two sine theta. So from this form, we can determine that the eccentricity E is equal to two. This tells us we have a hyperbola. We can also determine that ED must equal four. Well, if ED is four and E is equal to two, we know that D is equal to positive two. And since our denominator contains one minus two sine theta, we're gonna have a horizontal directrix at Y equals negative two. Let's go ahead and take this information onto the next screen and then graph our hyperbola. So we have a directrix at y equals negative two. That would be here. And we also know we have a focus at the pole. One more thing I like to use to help graph this is, remember that sine theta is equal to y on the unit circle. I use that to help me remember that this hyperbola will open up or down along the y-axis. So it's going to look something like this. With one focus at the pole. And the reason that's helpful is when we start to pick our angles, we can use pi over two and three pi over two to determine the two vertices of the hyperbola. Let's go ahead and start by doing that. Again, it doesn't matter whether we use the original form or the simplified form of the equation. Let's go ahead and use the simplified form for this table. When theta is pi over two, the sine of pi over two is going to equal positive one. So we'll have four divided by one minus two or four divided by negative one. That's negative four. And when theta is three pi divided by two, sine three pi divided by two is going to equal negative one. So we'll have four divided by one minus two times negative one, or four divided by three or four thirds. So pi over two, negative four will be here, and three pi over two, four thirds would be somewhere in here. Now from here, notice the distance between this vertex and this focus is four thirds units. So that would be the same distance from this vertex to the second focus. So we can go ahead and plot that point here. Now one more thing we can notice about the graph of our hyperbola that opens up or down along the y-axis with a focus at the pole. It will be symmetrical across the y-axis or about theta equals pi over two. So that means that when we're completing this t-table, every time we find a single point, we can actually plot two points by reflecting it across the y-axis or theta equals pi over two. Let's select theta equals zero. We know the sine of zero is zero, so we'll have four divided by one or four. So when theta is zero, r is four, so we'll be here. 
which means we know there's another point on the other side of the y-axis or theta equals pi over two right here. There's probably enough information to make a nice sketch of this piece of the hyperbola. Let's go ahead and do that. It would look something like this. This. Now because we have this half of the hyperbola, we should be able to use this information to sketch the rest of this hyperbola. Remember this was y equals negative two, and the distance from the focus to the pole was four thirds of a unit. So the distance from the vertex to the directrix would be two thirds of a unit. So we can sketch the other directrix two thirds of a unit above this vertex. And then we could use symmetry to determine the location of these other points on this piece of the hyperbola, or we could select a different angle theta. But I think we'll go ahead and just use symmetry. If we went out four units from this vertex in this direction, we would have to go down four thirds of a unit. And we know that because the distance here is four thirds, the distance here was four units. And of course, there's another point down here that's out four units and down four thirds of a unit. And we can go ahead and sketch it from here. It looks something like that. And here's a nice graph of it using a program, which looks very similar to what we just did by hand. And down here, we just see a review of what we used to graph hyperbolas using rectangular coordinates. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.